Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to MTD CNC. I'm here today with Bernd and we're talking about the aerospace market. So how are you doing today, Bernd? Hey Eric, and nice to meet you today. And um, yeah, as you already said, we want to talk a bit about uh, our Starak machines, especially on the landing gear application, what we're doing all over the world and especially in uh, Canada and in the US. For sure. And uh, you know, as you know, when that pandemic hit, air travel went to zero, right? The airliners had to get bailed out. Aerospace industry really took a hit. But since that, I mean, we've had a record year in 2022 this summer for airplane travel, right? And now everyone's scrambling again to get their aerospace production back up and running. So do you see that market growing in the future? Yeah, absolutely. So you're totally right. So we, we came down from a real poor uh, time. We all know that due to COVID, unfortunately, everything was down on earth. And But uh, luckily, the engineers uh, didn't uh, stop working. So there were a lot of new innovations, especially on the aircraft market. Uh, new aero engines with a way higher um, uh, range where they can fly to, so smaller aircrafts can do longer ranges. And all with all these things in, in, in the back end, uh, we see a huge potential on that market. And as we're already in that market since more than 20 years, not only for the landing gear, we only do structure parts and panels and uh, nearly everything on aviation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, from both the commercial and the defense market, right, these guys are acquiring more and more out of their aerospace parts suppliers, right? Our, our customers are being demanded to create more parts. We're seeing more landing gears getting put out, right? Yeah, right. Well, just let, let's stick to the point that even the passengers, passenger numbers, come back to the numbers where they were before COVID. Mm -hmm. um, the capacities are available on the market, but due to the new innovations on, on the engine side, uh, we see... Uh, more flexibility is required in the future. That's what we're seeing, uh, that smaller aircrafts uh, will take over the role of the larger ones. It's better to have two smaller ones on the same line if you require them, but only take one if the passenger number is low on a certain period of time a year, which means at the end of the day, to cover the same number of passengers means you need more landing gears because even a smaller, land, uh, smaller aircraft have three landing gears, one lone um, nose landing gear and one two main landing gears. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now that these companies, they want to have two smaller planes as opposed to one large, right? So now instead of three landing gears, it's six. So the output is just getting greater and greater and you guys have the machining solutions for these large envelope products, right? Right, well, we, we do not only have the, uh, the machining solutions on that side, we also have the, let's say the experience on that. So we made huge progress over the last 20 years and since since 2001, we're already in that business of landing gear, and uh, it's more about the machine tool. It's all about the tools, the process, the fixtures, and also especially the programs. There's a lot of uh, yeah, process design requirements on what you see in the, uh, on the screen here, where we are really doing innovation and research and development work on it. And a lot of material removal. I know from a forging, you know, like this landing gear, every part's getting cut, right? And aerospace requires tight tolerances and star I can deliver. Exactly. So simple as it is, as long as it, as soon as it comes to large parts and high accuracy, I'm the right guy from the Stara group to talk about with our facility in Bielefeld for Droop and Rhine and also for Darius when it comes to any turning purpose on the machining side. Uh, but if it comes to smaller parts, we also have the solution from our Rorschach guys. We have the super good competence center. Um, yeah, let's say launched this year in July, I was, it was, uh, where my colleague Reini showed up with huge innovations on the blade industry side, on the engine casing side and so on and so on. So we, we cover pr pretty much on everything on an aircraft. So when you're, when you're talking about these machines and, you know, Industry 4.0 is a buzzword that we hear a million times a day. How are you guys implementing these solutions? Are you able to do that on the machine? Yeah, sure. So uh, you, you totally... Uh, said it right, Industry 4.0 is a wide open field and it, it pretty much reminds me of what we discussed, let's say, 15 years ago when it comes to the volumetric accuracy discussion. Nobody really had a clue what really means volumetric accuracy. We're 20, 20 years far off and now we're faced to Industry 4.0 and looking for solutions. And um, Sturrock pretty much has a master plan on that. So our colleagues from Hacker, they're working on a data locker solution and we're covering and um, yeah, storing many, many data, and we do not need a cloud solution for that. So we can uh, do it on demand on our machines. And yeah, we, we serve several different uh, options and features for covering Industry 4.0.
it all depends on the requirements of the customer. Uh, we have to see it from case to case. Is it a serial product? Is it a prototyping customer? Is it a customer who is doing job shopping with different parts every day from different uh, business units, however you see it? So we uh, fully focus on the demands of our customers. and. Uh, I think I think we're pretty good and prepared for the future. Yeah, and, the, and there's a lot of demand from your customers, right? And the one thing I think is cool is that you recognize that at the end of the day, what the customer cares about is cost per part. Exactly. So uh, I talked about uh, nearly everything around the machine, but at the end, for our customer, he's not really. Uh, it would be the it would be wrong if I say he's not interested in the machine, but at the end, he's interested in the solution. And we are not doing any sales out of a brochure. It's a, uh, it's not a customized solution what we are selling. So we're working on uh, different platforms and modules, which is uh, working out really great for us. But at the end, it, we come uh, come across the corner with a um, customized solution for the customer, which at the end reduces the cost per part, as you already said. So even if the the first investment on the machine might be slightly higher than on other machines. The return on investment is much better on our side because we reduce non-productive machining cycles and machining times because we always say a machine tool is prepared to make chips and mm -hmm. that's for, for what the customer needs it for. He doesn't need it for maintenance. It's just a, a need to have it to make the machine better than it is already. So we are good on that, I think. Oh, fantastic. Thanks, Bird, for uh, taking the time to talk with me. It's I have been to a thank pleasure. you for this great opportunity to talk about this really interesting application of blending gears. It's a great application. So uh, look to Star Egg to uh, increase your capacity and hit those high tolerances. Yes, yeah, thank you very much. So Eric. thank you.